Well, a new false cure for COVID in high demand, ivermectin. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to risk your life or your health to take unproven medication. The jury's still out on ivermectin. Things are clear and coming from trusted medical agencies. If you get COVID, don't take a drug traditional. Ivermectin is highly effective. Then everyone should be using it. I say very clearly that ivermectin is not a recommended treatment for COVID-19. Ivermectin. We've all been hearing about it, but what is it? And why are so many people focused on it being the next groundbreaking treatment for COVID-19? Let's dive in. Ivermectin is an FDA-approved, broad-spectrum antiparasitic agent that is used to treat parasitic diseases. Antiparasitic drugs are a group of medications used in the management and treatment of infections that cover a broad range of diseases caused by parasites. The application of ivermectin in relation to COVID-19 has been brought to light recently due to the speculation that the drug may provide potential benefits for treatment of the virus. With the news of ivermectin shortages and the recent debate regarding its safety across international news channels, a divide has formed between ivermectin supporters and its critics. Famous television personality and podcaster Joe Rogan has made headlines in recent news for coming forward with his experience of COVID-19 and his support for the drug as a treatment. In response, numerous media outlets, including CNN and CNN-affiliated doctors like Sanjay Gupta, have blasted Rogan for his use and recommendation of ivermectin, which they refer to as the horse dewormer, stating it is a drug used for paralyzing and killing parasites intended for livestock. This has generated confusion about the drug and stimulated questions among the community, in large part due to the size of Rogan's podcast audience, where he receives over 200 million podcast downloads monthly. Rogan has since defended these claims by stating that ivermectin was produced by a reliable American company that won a Nobel Prize for the drug's applications in humans. All things considered, this debate has generated a lot of controversy over the past month and it has become a hot topic in recent news with regards to COVID-19. But if ivermectin is not an antiviral agent and instead an antiparasitic agent, then how does ivermectin work against the COVID-19 virus? Before we can understand this mechanism, we need to understand how the COVID-19 virus affects our health. In order for the virus to attack us, it needs to get into our cell's nucleus. However, our nucleus is pretty particular in what it lets inside us, and it does this gatekeeping work through what's called the nuclear pore complex. Since COVID-19 isn't meant to enter our nucleus, it hops on a protein complex that is allowed to go through the NPC. This protein complex is called the IMP alpha beta 1, and it's called alpha beta because there are two parts to the complex. Only when both the IMP alpha protein and the IMP beta protein are bound together or dimerized to form a complex, can the virus hop on the complex and get into the nucleus. What ivermectin does is that it inhibits the IMP alpha and beta subunits from dimerizing. So because this dimerization doesn't occur, the virus can't sneak into the nucleus. And while this mechanism is clever, the question becomes, is it worth it to consider ivermectin as a consistent and effective treatment? Ivermectin may have received a surge of attention recently. However, we cannot come to conclusions without comparing both sides of the story. Let's start with what makes ivermectin a lucrative option. Ivermectin is highly cost-effective in comparison to current COVID-19 treatments such as monoclonal antibodies or long-term hospitalization, which can make it an attractive solution for individuals with lower socioeconomic status. In addition, ivermectin has over 40 years of usage history which provides medical credibility and safety profile. Lastly, it is highly accessible. Although it is a prescribed medication in Canada, ivermectin can be an over-the-counter drug in other countries. This allows individuals from various backgrounds to have easy exposure to it. However, ivermectin isn't a dream come true. There is no real high quality evidence proving its therapeutic effect on targeting COVID-19. Yes, there are case studies and small sample size cohort studies that have shown that recovery times are shortened and the severity of symptoms is less. But no randomized control trials, the golden standard in evidence-based medicine, have shown ivermectin's benefits. Further, since the use of ivermectin in children and pregnant women is not well researched on, it decreases the possible demographic for usage. 
Lastly, ivermectin is very easy to overdose on, which can lead to skin rashes, vomiting, and potentially seizures. Most of the time, ivermectin is taken as a single dose medication. However, if used without medical supervision, individuals can easily intake more than the recommended amount. The discussion surrounding ivermectin is a complex and convoluted one. But now that we've laid out the facts, what's your decision?